I'm Mo Isom Aiken, the author of Fully Known, An Invitation to True Intimacy with God. I want to invite you to dive deep, to roll up your sleeves, and to really wrestle through the words, the pages of this book. Because in them, I believe they hold a prophetic word for this hour, as so many are restless or burnt out or feeling distant from God and wondering what does it mean to know God and to be known by him? Well, I would say it's the heart of the gospel, really. It's important that we get it right, that we understand this gospel invitation to relationship not just religion. See, Matthew 7, 21 through 23 met me when I was at a place of burnout, even though I was doing so many good things. I was working to build the kingdom. I was pouring myself out. And yet it's like my spirit came up for air and cried out, God, why do I feel so far from you? He drew me to Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And it's the scripture that says, not all who say to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. Many on that day will say to me, Lord, did, did we not prophesy? We cast demons, we perform miracles. But to them I will say, away from me, I never knew you. Those words rung in my head. I could not shake them. I had to know what that meant. Because when I stand before my maker, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, not away from me, I never knew you. Well, the Hebrew idiom, the translation of that word new implies intimacy, deep, layered, complex intimacy. In fact, it's the same version of the word used in a sexual context through the rest of the word. Mary had not yet known her husband or the man took his wife and he knew her. It's an invitation really to the most vulnerable form of intimacy there is. I said, God, what does this mean? And he reminded me, the whole earth sings of my glory. Everything I've designed, all that I've created, including you, including this gift of physical intimacy, of the relational design and its progression, all are meant to reveal the fullness of my heart, the fullness of my gospel, if only you would draw near and press in. I had to explore what that meant. Because really, when I looked at my life, what I saw was that most of my experiences or my memories or the relationships I saw around me were broken or fractured. Intimacy to me, colliding with God, that was kind of disconcerting. I, I didn't really understand how the two so wholly wove together. But that's the enemy's greatest tactic. That sometimes is our greatest struggle is that the invitation of the gospel is to understand how to navigate true, sanctifying, humbling, transformative intimacy with God. But what we've known or experienced of intimacy involves abandonment, involves pain. For some of us, it involves abuse. For some of us, it involves confusion. For some of us, really, it's, it's masturbatory in nature. It's all about ourselves. And the problem with this is these counterfeit forms of intimacy are confusing us to the truth of what pure God-designed intimacy is. We have to wrestle through them. We have to process through to be healed, to become whole in our understanding. Because when we come to understand that he came to rescue us, to pull us from the prison gates of our brothel cell of sin, our enslavement, after we are so deceived that he came on a rescue mission to set us free. And then he took a knee in the very condition he finds us. He took a knee and he proposed marriage to us. He looks at our past, the covenant of his love, of his cross. It takes a knee for our future. When we start to understand that marriage, 
of the bridegroom to the bride. We begin to understand covenantal love that changes everything. We have to draw in, to draw near, to come away with him into the hidden place. That's where intimacy between a man and a woman are truly cultivated, right? A husband and a wife in the hidden, unseen place. This too is where intimacy with God is cultivated. And we have to let the layers be so gently and kindly pulled back our fear, our sin, our shame, our trauma. We have to be willing to explore him too, to understand more of his nature, his character, his heart. We have to be willing to say, even if it hurts, even if it's hard, even if this is exposing, (laughs) truly stepping in to intimacy with God. Man, I know that your yes is sure. You bring abiding love. And my yes can't hinge on my happiness or my comfort. My yes must be an all of me yes. And I will stay of I believe your promises. I believe your word. I believe that no matter what this exposes, no matter how hard this may be, I believe that you're good. And when we come together with him in that nature, when we wrestle through the hardest questions in our heart, man, when we're willing to be vulnerable, known, exposed, loved, redeemed by the spirit of the living God in the hidden place, man, he sows seeds of life into us. Just as when a husband and a wife come together, life is conceived. He wants to sow into us the plans that he has for us, the mission to see kingdom come, the promises of his word and his heart. He wants them to gestate to life within us. And though there is pain, though there is labor, though it will be friction and tension and warfare, seeing them come to pass, our God wants us to birth forth spirit born works where we will see the power of God manifest for the world around us, the love of God, the grace of God, the spirit of God, where the work of the cross won't be in vain, but where we will see it come to pass here on earth. And we will see kingdom come here on earth as it will be in heaven. And we will be sustained in our journey forward. Man, this intimacy, it's so important because in drawing near to God in this way, it's works born of the spirit that are produced versus in many of our lives. In my case, it was my works, my efforts preceding my intimacy with God. How often is our question? Well, I'm doing all of these things and they're all good God honoring things. And I just don't know when I'm going to fit in time for God. How do I fit in time in the word? Oh, let's look to Mary and Martha's life where he told Martha, man, Mary has found the good portion and it cannot be taken from her. And Mary was at the feet of Jesus, her intimacy, her reception from him, preceding her labors and her efforts and her life. And this too can become, must become the rhythm of our stories. But in order to rightly understand intimacy, we have to work through the ways that we've confused it, misunderstood it, what we're fearful of when it comes to drawing forward in faith. I believe you were made to know intimacy with God, to know him fully and to be fully known. And I pray you'll pick up this book and dig into these pages as he does a holy heart work in and through your story.